I am Dr. Lalit Penny. Today I am going to talk about valgus osteotomy for the proximal femur. We will be talking about the basic steps and complete with a few clinical examples. There are various ways of uh, planning out this osteotomy and executing it. Today I would be sharing with you how to plan out this osteotomy using a 120 degree double angle barrel plate. Now, as you can see that uh, this is different from the blade plate in the form that it has a screw which goes into the head and neck and a barrel plate which slides over the screw. So the ease of execution of this fixation is higher than the double angle blade plate. However, the stability would be less than double angle blade plate. So uh, why it is called a double angle? There are two angles. The top one, like the normal DCS, which is 95 degrees. And another second bend, which is lower, which comes just adjacent to hole, which is there for a screw which can be put with the hip screw. And that's around 25 degree. So that is why it, it is called a 120 degree double angle barrel plate. So uh, here is a picture which shows you an x-ray on the extreme left. And as was always done, we would make out a tracing out of it and calculate our valgus angle of the proximal femur. In this particular case example, it is 100 degrees. So we mark out the center of the head. We mark out the center of the neck using a point which is midway in line with the hip joint. And then the second line is in line with the shaft, which again is a connect of two points, which are as far as away from each other and midpoint of the diaphysis. Nowadays, we have the possibility of creating a real-time, real-size 3D printed model if we have a CT scan of the same patient. So placement of the guide pin is of key importance when we are using a 120 degree fixed angle barrel plate. Now, as you can see in the first diagram, we have put a wire in line with the neck and the head. And then once the barrel plate comes in, it touches the outer part of the femur and subtends an angle. And this is the amount of which, this is the angle which is correctable when we use this particular plate plate at this particular angle. So a same sort of a wedge would be taken out through the intertrochantric area and once the distal femur is moved out, it is a closing wedge osteotomy, the shaft of the femur will come adjacent to the plate. Now let's look at the other example. Now if the guide pin entering from the same starting point ends up at the inferior quadrant of the head, that means it is not at in line with the neck, but it is more towards the inferior. You can look, you can look at it that the plate is moving away. The plate is moving away. So the, the angle of correction which you can achieve is larger. However, a larger wedge would have to be removed. Similarly, if you move the pin towards the superior quadrant, then the plate move towards the shaft and the angle which can be corrected decreases. So understand this, this principle that placement of the pin is very important. And the second part is what sort of a blade plate you are using would decide upon your wedge and correction. So it's a good idea to use a real-time x-ray, real size, and take a tracing and use the plate which you're going to use to plan it on the tracing like we have done here. So let's go ahead with this example. Uh, in the first picture, we have placed the guide pin along the neck of the femur. 
And in this particular patient, the neck shaft angle is 100 degrees. You can see that uh, this is the amount of wedge around 25 degrees, which is going to be removed to get the shaft against the plate. So one practical tip is uh, once you have put the wire, you put the screw, then you put the barrel plate. That is the time you mark on the outer aspect of the femur where the barrel plate is seating. So your top osteotomy should, should end here so that the osteotomy closes well and the femoral shaft sits on the plate. So if in this case, we have measured this distance as 3.5 centimeters. And if you go straight down 3.5 centimeter, the gap which comes here is actually the wedge you have to take out. This is what has been shown over here. So this distance, when you keep the barrel plate, is the wedge you need to remove. And as a practical tip, we invariably, uh, you know, uh, undercut, you remove slightly smaller wedges. So a way to do that could be that you put the wires at the correct position. However, you can cut on the inner side of the wire. So here is the bone model and the tracing, the same thing which is explained. You know, these triangles are same and you always want your osteotomy to exit proximal to the lesser trochanter and exit on the outer side where the barrel plate is coming in. So once you've done these markings, you can take out your barrel plate and execute your osteotomy. So here are the wires which are coming in, the guide pin and the osteotomy wires, the two wires. And in the bone model, we made the osteotomy. So again, we are keeping our bone model on the paper tracing which we had done and just checking out whether we are doing it in the right way. So once the wedge is removed, you close the osteotomy and uh, this is what gives you the correction. So here is the final fixation with a double angle barrel plate where you can see the osteotomy closes at the second angle of the double angle plate. And this gives you a correction of around 125 degrees. So resultant neck shaft angle is 125 degrees. So this is the on the bone model, this is on the tracing, and this is actually the X-ray of the bone model after we, we fix the osteotomy. This is the osteotomy with the double angle barrel plate. The second screw is a very key screw when we use a barrel plate because this is the screw which negates the rotational movement in the proximal fat. So these are the principles, the simple principles. Let me show you a few examples which will clarify things further. Now, this is a common example uh, in a fracture neck of femur in which we've done a valgus osteotomy and also added on an extra fibula to give some bone stock. So one of the commonest example where we use this valgus osteotomy today. Another example, it's a case of a fracture shark femur with neck femur where you know the neck femur was missed out and the patient came late. So we removed the nail, the shaft had united. Look at this, we put a derotation wire, we put our screw, then executed the osteotomy and then brought back the plate and the osteotomy closes. We put the derotation screw and we replaced the wire with a fibular strut. Now this is a more complex case in the way that uh, the, the deformity becomes even more severe. So one way of correcting it is that, you know, you get your, you screw in the inferior quadrant. The other way of correcting it is that you get a very large wedge. The third way is that you take a half wedge and do a closing wedge on this side and an opening wedge on the medial side. Meaning that you, the bone which has been taken out uses, is used on the medial side. So this is what is a half wedge and in the post-op here, you place the half wedge to correct them. So you neither gone in the inferior quadrant, nor have you taken a very large wedge, but you've got the correction as desired. 
Now, this is a case of fibrous dysplasia. I just want to re-emphasize the basic principles of osteotomies that you need to check the range of movement in the plane which you're doing the osteotomy because in a vas valgus osteotomy, the limb is left in abduction after the osteotomy. So once the patient has to walk, he has to have some range of adduction to get the limb down. So it is important to get your abduction and adduction views done. So this is a case of fibrous dysplasia and the shaft is also involved distally. So here's the tracing on the planning. So we decided that we will add on an enders nail also because you have lesions down there also. So again, a pretty severe sort of a angular deformity, which has been corrected to a reasonable sort of a correction. And we've added enders nails to it. So once you start doing these cases with paper tracings of real size with the implant which you use, you will be able to address such severe deformities uh, with same principles. Here you have used the principle in which you have got your screw in the inferior quadrant so that you can take out a large wedge from the proximal and we also had to take up a large wedge. From, so this is a larger plate and a double valve system. So I hope uh, you're able to understand the principles of preoperative planning uh, for valgus osteotomy for the proximal femur. Thank you very much for your attention.